Please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hello and welcome to this year end review special of Tech Toy CNBC TV 18's technology series. I'm Megha Vishwanath. It's the last week of December, which for us means the season of recaps and wrap ups. Now, 2017 was the year of artificial intelligence, robots, and going wireless. For consumers, this translates to having smarter smartphones and more intuitive home devices. On the show today, we look at the year gone by and get you a sneak peek of what 2018 has on offer. Let's start by paying homage to the top five smartphones of 2017. At the onset, let me start by saying I am a fan of Excel smartphones. It offers bigger screen, better battery and in some cases, more power. If there is an option, I would go for the Plus version. One of the most impressive smartphones in this category is the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. It is one of Samsung's biggest smartphones, quite literally with a 6.3-inch Infinity display that stretches edge to edge. This is also Samsung's first to pack in a dual camera offering. Now, one of the biggest differentiators between the Note 8 and all other flagship smartphones continues to be the S Pen or the stylus that comes with the phone. So after multiple explosions, recalls and making it on the no-fly list with the Note 7, I'd say that Samsung is back in the game with the Note 8. Let's go next to the Android powerhouse Google and the Pixel 2 series. Last year, Pixel and Pixel XL made a solid debut and this year, Google unveiled the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL. This series is made for those who choose functionality over design. Basically, the Pixel 2 might not be love at first sight, but give it a shot and it won't disappoint you. For one, the Google Assistant has aged and is far more accurate than Siri on iOS devices. The camera on the Pixel has to be one of the best we saw in 2017 and instead of stacking up two lenses, Google is using machine learning to produce better results. Also, if you're on a budget, consider going for the HTC manufactured Pixel 2 instead of its Excel cousin made by LG because it packs in a better display without the screen burns that has been a complaint for the Excel. While the Pixel 2 series grows on you over time, for me, the iPhone 10 was love at first sight. Apple did what it does best, create a luxurious design that you can proudly park on top of the table. Now, unlike the Note 8 or the Pixel 2 XL, the iPhone 10's overall size is way smaller, but it manages to house a 5.8-inch display as opposed to a 5.5-inch display on the iPhone 8 Plus. Apart from the beautiful design, what you will notice is that the iPhone 10 does not pack in a home button which means that you will have to teach yourself new navigation gestures. Here's a quick shout out to the Samsung manufactured OLED display on the iPhone 10. It's sharp, vibrant and another first for Apple. The other big upgrade is the Face ID security feature. Setting up Face ID is simple. Just adjust your face along the border and you're done. Does it work? Well, let's go with 90%. The iPhone 10 has two optically stabilized 12 megapixel camera that manages to produce stunning results and the battery usually lasts me a full day. To conclude, let me just say that iPhone 10 is stunning but it has its own flaws. On top of the list, Apple did away with a headphone jack and this led to a cascading effect with most smartphone makers following suit. And so, Chinese handset maker OnePlus deserves a special mention for not just building a promising smartphone, but also for standing their ground. This year, OnePlus lobbed two grenades into the smartphone arena, the OnePlus 5 in June and the OnePlus 5T in November. Premium build quality, killer specs and a comparatively affordable price tag. That's what the OnePlus flagships are about. The OnePlus 5 was a beauty and a beast. Powered by the latest Snapdragon 835 processor, you have two variants the 6GB RAM with 64GB of internal storage and 8GB of RAM with 128GB of storage. Aesthetically, this handset looks like a love child between the iPhone 7 Plus and an Oppo, but in a good way. It looks premium enough to take on the best. OnePlus 5 packs in a 1080p OLED display and the alert slider, which is a personal favourite. Now in June when I put out the review, my only complaint was with the camera but OnePlus made up for that in the 5T. OnePlus refined the display further by lopping off the home button 
and packing in an upgraded 6-inch OLED display. This for me was an overall winner. So in the 30,000s price band, the OnePlus flagships are a no-brainer. But there is no game without competition. In this case, it took on the avatar of Xiaomi Mi Mix 2. Now it's worth noting that Mi Mix was the first to launch a bezel-less display smartphone last year. And here's a look at Xiaomi's head-turner, Mi Mix 2. Now Xiaomi introduced the Mi Mix 2 and that is the truest to the term bezel-less. Which means that this 5.99 inch display barely has a forehead or a chin. In terms of design, the aerospace grade aluminum alloy frame and a ceramic backplate is a visual delight and for the budget flagship pricing, the device has some pretty solid specs. To sum it up, this was a great year for smartphones. We saw massive leaps in design with solid performance and never before seen technologies like Face ID and machine learning on cameras. But wait, there's more. Apart from smartphones, here's a quick look at smart devices available in India that may soon find place in your home. Now, Amazon launched Home Assistant Alexa and its Echo speakers in India. As of now, the Echo smart speakers have no competition as its biggest rival, Google Home, isn't available in India just yet. Alexa is now available with three smart speakers, the Echo Dot, the Echo and the Echo Plus. The three speakers are bundled with a one-year Amazon Prime membership. What can Alexa do for you? Well, think of it as a sci-fi personal assistant. You can ask questions, set up reminders, look up for recipes, ask music to be played and most importantly, Alexa understands our Indian accent and terms like drawing room. The most premium device of this lot is the Echo Plus, which is priced at 10,499 rupees and obviously comes with the most features. But if that's way up your budget, go for the better looking and mid range Echo at 6,999 rupees. Time for a quick break on Tech Toys, but on the other side, we move out of the studio and take you straight to Hawaii. My name is Megha Vishwanath and chip maker Qualcomm has decided to host its annual tech summit in Hawaii this year and I'm here to bring you all the action. of Snapdragon. What has the past decade been like? Take us over uh, this 10 year long journey. First Snapdragon started when we broke the barrier of one gigahertz in a, a CPU speed mm -hmm. in a mobile uh, device. From there it has been a series of innovation uh, with uh, one or two flagship launches every year for 10 years from multi-core to you know faster speeds on 3G to the very first 5G and breaking the barrier of uh, one gigabit speeds in mobile. So we're very excited about the platform, but we believe the best days of the platform are probably going to be within the next 10 years. 120 handsets or flagships uh, that have Snapdragon uh, 835. 835 on it. Some of them are out there, some of them are still in the works. What does it mean for Qualcomm to work with so many different OEMs across different price categories, different makes? Uh, how does the business model work for Qualcomm? This is actually the essence of the Qualcomm business model. It's, uh, you know, a lot of discussions, I think, uh, over the years with the Qualcomm business model. The Qualcomm business model is about one company investing in R&D and sharing with many other companies. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, it's one of the beauties of the Snapdragon platform is not only we could do the R&D of every new innovation in the phone space, but also the innovation in consumer electronics and enable a number of OEMs at the same time uh, to bring the products to market. Another interesting uh, thing that you uh, mentioned briefly was about 5G. And one of the numbers that we've so far heard is the magic number 2020. Every time someone says 5G, one thing that we hear is 2020. That's the year when 5G would be reality. 
what Qualcomm said uh, today was that 2019, in fact, first half 2019 uh, is when we will get to see 5G. So that's way sooner than what the industry has been estimating so far. How did this process get accelerated and what makes Qualcomm bet on 2019 as the year of turning 5G into reality? Yes, back in the beginning of 17, Qualcomm starting together with a combination of uh, uh, five companies, uh, companies such as AT&T, Vodafone, Qualcomm, SK Telecom, NTT Docomo in Japan. Right. Uh, we got together with the uh, goal of accelerating 5G by one year. Uh, then around the Mobile World Congress time frame 2017, we got the support of 40 other leaders in the industry across infrastructure vendor, operators, device OEMs. Very soon, any day now, we'll be able to conclude the global standardization in this year of uh, 5G. And with the standard ready, we are going to, you know, continue the development that we started, you know, uh, this year. We'll have our technology ready by the end of 18 in fully interoperability with many of our partners. And you're going to be ready to buy a device in many markets, at least markets such as Europe, the United States, uh, Korea, Australia, and likely China. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to buy a device in the first half of 2019. So you're saying that 5G would be uh, uh, not just theory but a reality by 2019 but it's also going to be available uh, in so many countries. Now speaking of India, right, we back home are still struggling to get proper 3G and 4G. So for us 5G right now sounds like an extremely ambitious target. Is there a possibility for India to accelerate and upgrade to 5G by 2019 as well? It's a, it's a great question, and, uh, and I'll, I think it's a great seg segue for a comment I want to make. If you look at the efforts that's happening in India right now with 4G, yes. and I think we saw you know, what Geo was able Which, to do. Mm -hmm. We have, a, you know, in partnership with Qualcomm, I think there has been one of the fastest you know, deployments of 4G technology, and it's such a vast coverage, and it's changing dramatically uh, the mobile industry in India. Sure. One, one belief of many countries is the transformation of 4G in the smartphone that has been very profound. It's going to be even more profound with 5G okay. because of the percentage of the digital economy as it relates to a country's GDP. Right. So many countries see 5G as actually a necessity to maintain the competitive of the industry, competitive of the companies. So there are, of course, challenges. There are usual challenges of having availability spectrum and infrastructure. But I would believe a country like India, mm -hmm. which is in a very uh, fast-paced economic development, looking at the benefits of that 4G infrastructure deployment, there's no reason why India cannot accelerate 5G right. and basically build on top on this 4G investment. So, so far we've been talking or the government and the operators have been stating 2020 as the number. Is India ready for 5G or is it possible for us to uh, experience 5G by 2019? It is a possibility. Uh, it depends on the operators and the government commitments to infrastructure and a spectrum, but if that's what India wants, we'll be ready for it. At Qualcomm Snapdragon Summit, the chipmaker finally unveiled details of its years-long project with Microsoft to create a PC that looks like a regular laptop or a computer, but works like a high-end smartphone. What do we mean by that? Well, they support LTE connections, the battery would last you up to 20 hours on a single charge, they boot instantly and most importantly, they are powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 835 processor, the same processor that found its place in most top-of-the-line 2017 flagship smartphones. But all this is not just theory anymore. Asus and HP are first of many to ride on this always connected PC wave. Asus's Nova Go here might look like a regular everyday laptop but it runs on Snapdragon 835 processor along with Microsoft Windows 10S. Under the hood sits a 4GB or 8GB of RAM coupled with a 64GB or 128GB of internal storage depending on your pick. Asus also claims to support a 30-hour resting and 22 hours of active battery life. Impressed? There's more. Meet HP's NV X2 that is super light and the makers claim that it will last you up to 20 hours on a single charge. The spec sheet reads, 
8 GB of RAM, up to 256 GB of internal storage and it sports a 12.3 inch display and this will be available for sale by spring 2018. So clearly the line between what each device is supposed to do, be it smartphones, laptops or tablets, it's blurring or at least that's the hope for the future. At the summit, Qualcomm also unveiled its brand new chipset, the Snapdragon 845, which will show up in smartphones and laptops early next year. And here's everything that you need to know about this brand new chipset. Introducing the Snapdragon 845, mobile platform. What's in a chip, you ask? Well, to put it simply, Snapdragon 845 smartphones will perform better by being almost 25% smarter and 30% more power efficient that translates to better battery life. Snapdragon 845 goes another step forward into the AI age with faster processing than its predecessor, Snapdragon 835. Qualcomm also claims to pack in a new secure processing unit that can be used for protecting data on the phone, biometric authentication and for making mobile payments. There's more. Snapdragon 845 promises better camera performance with improved color depths and wider gamuts. Qualcomm is calling it Ultra HD Premium. Now rumors suggest that one of the first smartphones to ship this chip could be the Samsung Galaxy S9. Now, the 800 series, which is the top of the line chipset, yes. packs in all these amazing features where it's better security, AI, yes. you know, better camera. Think about it and it's there. Speaking specifically about India, yes. the, the more popular or the more saturated segment in India is but obviously the, the budget smartphone segment, yes. which has typically seen so far at least the 400 or in some cases the 600 uh, series of chipsets. So yes. how do you then pack in like some of these better technologies yes. for lower end smartphones yes. so that you know users which is by a new flagship yes and uh, uh, we do that on a very regular cadence and then what we do is during the year we take some of the technologies a subset of the technologies from our new 800 and move them into the 600 tier the 400 tier and the 200 tier so some of the technologies will waterfall down some will stay exclusive to the premium tier mm. for example the very best graphics performance, the very best gaming performance, the very best ability to have a immersive, a virtual or augmented reality experiment mm -hmm. experience will probably stay in the 800 tier. Okay. But some of the advances in camera, or mm. some of the advances in, in video and so forth, some of the advances in power, we're able to move down to the less expensive uh, tiers. Mm. And so it is true that um, even a user who buys a new Snapdragon 6 or 400 in the next year is going to take advantage of some of those technologies. All right, so now you've been working on the Snapdragon 845, which was revealed at the summit. Hopefully, we're going to see that across all flagship smartphones, or at least that's the hope, uh, right. you know, in 2018. Yes. What else is on offer or what's, uh, you know, in the pipelines for Qualcomm now? You've, you've entered the PC space, yes. you've launched your chipset already. Yes. Uh, what do the next 12 months look for you like? Well, I think in uh, smartphones, you're right, we expect a lot of success with smartphones. Uh, we're just entering the PC market, so that'll also take off over time. Um, we also see an opportunity for dedicated augmented and virtual reality devices. Mm -hmm. And so they had a lot of hype uh, maybe a few years ago. Yeah. Some of that hype has died down, but we think there's some compelling new designs coming out in 2018. Mm. And as we look ahead, we think that's going to be a form factor that eventually does take off and offer a very uh, uh, a great uh, user experience. Can you speak to us a little more about the new form factor because what you said about virtual yes. reality or augmented reality dying down was essentially uh, the design you know walking yes. around with a headset yes. is it's gimmicky it's fun for the first 15 minutes That's right. and then you get over it right? That's right. So when you talk about a new form factor which we will get to see in 2018 what do you mean by that? Yes so you know one of the ways to experience virtual reality today is uh, you can buy a, a visor a, a display if you will and you just drop your smartphone in, True. right? But there's a lot of limitations of your smartphone just being slotted in. It doesn't have the right cameras, it doesn't have a flexible display, mm -hmm. it doesn't have the right type of display. And so what you need is virtual and augmented reality uh, devices that are made specifically for that purpose. Mm. And that's what we believe we'll see in 2018. Okay. And then over time, um, as there's new materials, new displays, as we introduce new chips, uh, the battery life will continue to improve. 
the devices will keep getting smaller and lighter until they and look like that the glasses looks, yes. that you have today. Yes. And then you'll have the glasses that you have today where you see the world around you, but you can also augment the real world with the virtual world using information from the cloud. So are we trying to say that Google actually might have got it right eight years back I, uh, with the Google Glass because that didn't go... Uh, I mean, it didn't see it didn't see the light of the day, yeah. but uh, yeah. but that was something that they got right. The fact that it has to be something that is easily wearable. It's not something that's very intrusive. Yes. Uh, but we're coming back or circling back to it in 2018. Yes, I think uh, you know. You walk around today and you see a lot of individuals staring at their phone for maps or uh, to get additional information. But this mo this phone is just a very small window, yeah. right? And you can see the world around your phone. But if you take that small window and put it around your eyes and you can augment what you see in the real world with additional information, it's a very compelling experience. The issue is the technology just isn't there yet. We're going to see leaps with the Snapdragon 845 in 2018. All right. And then there'll be more leaps in the years to come. That's it on this year and a special of CNBC TV 18 Tech Toys. We couldn't have thought of a better way to wrap up 2017. I will see you next year with sleeker gadgets, smarter devices and hopefully at a time when all these future technology trends will be our present. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in 2018.